Hi and welcome to this new tutorial series, Houdini Practice Hour. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. As you maybe know, I've published some time ago a full Houdini Fundamentals training on Vimeo, Houdini FX Fundamentals by Pixel Train. This tutorial series, Houdini Practice Hour, is meant for the same artists who now want to practice their knowledge on a project-based manner. I want to work with you on your skills as an artist, learning Houdini for the first time. It will always be a full project from concept to finish so that you can follow along a complete project on your own and make it your own. I hope you like it. If yes, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. So, and let's get started. Have fun. You're Helge Maus. So let's get started with setting up our Houdini scene first. And the first thing I want to do is I want to load into the compositing context my reference image. So let's switch here to the compositing environment by going here, image context. And here we have an image network. I dive into that. And to see what you output from this context, you can switch here to the composite view. Here you are. Inside of this compositing context, you have nodes, which are normally used for compositing purposes. So you have a full node-based compositing environment inside of Houdini, a really powerful feature. What we need is a file node, which you know from the sub context. So let's add a file node here. And instead of showing this butterfly here, we click this white symbol. And I'm in a project here and under my reference folder, I have here some images of bananas, which I found in the internet. If you don't see the thumbnails, a little tip, you can press with the right mouse button here to show the images. And I decide that I want, for example, this here as my reference image. So accept that. And now we see that we have loaded this banana. The big advantage working in this compositing context is that you have now all the compositing nodes under your fingertips. So if you want to crop the image, you want to make a color correction, you want to mirror the image and so on, you can do all this stuff inside of this context here. In our case, we don't need that. So I go here now back to our object context and I also switch my viewer back. If you now want to have your reference image somewhere in your user interface, you can use a composite view. You can use that here or you can add here one. For example, you click here the little plus sign, go to the new pane types, and I go here to viewers. Here's the composite view. If you add this now here, you get in your interface this new window, and now you can switch back and forth to see now your reference image. Okay, great. Another thing which I like is that I have some reference images in my viewport and you can use image planes if you have a really complex object but for the banana it's absolutely enough to have for example in the front view this image here so switch to the front view can do it here through the menu going here perspective set view or you can use your keyboard shortcut spacebar 3 and you can check here oh, now we are in the front view to change now the background image we press the d key like display options and we go here to the background tab. Here we normally change the color scheme, but underneath that we have tabs with the different views we have inside of Houdini. And we see that Houdini have highlighted here front because that's the viewport we are in in the moment. And here we can load now an image. You can load a disk file or as we have our image in the cops, I switch here to cop image and then I use this operator selector to select now here the image or the output node of your node tree inside of the compositing context. Accept. And here we go. Another thing we have to change is here the auto placement option. You see, if I go here now in the viewport and zoom in and out, you see the grid changing, but the banana stays in size. And so this is not the thing I want. I want to have an absolutely fixed size of this image. So if you deactivate this, you will see now is the banana always in the same size and you can navigate in your viewport like you used to. Let's use the image offset to place the image in the middle and that's it. Now we can leave here 
the display options. And be aware that you only see this image here in the front view. And for now further working, I normally tend to have two viewports open at the same time. So I split now my window here, go to a two view side by side column. And here I press space by one to have a perspective view. And here I use now my front view so that I can work now better here with my reference image. As a little reminder, if you later work and you feel that you need more space, you can use on one side control B to make this scene view here full screen and control B brings you back. Or you can press the B key, which brings here the views to full screen. And it's a toggle between the single and the quad view, but we've split it. Instead of quads, we use two columns. And so B brings you between the single view and the two columns view. That's enough for this setup now. So let's add here a box to start with. And what I now want to do is I want to show you some little tips and tricks which will help you to work a little bit more efficient if you make different modeling inside of Houdini. One thing is that we really often want to see through an object. And you remember that we have here the different shading modes. And you can go here and say, I now want to see the wireframe and so on. That's possible, but it's really slow. So you can press the W key while you're over your viewport. And the cool thing is, if you press the W, you see that we get the wireframe with ghosting. You can select it here and that's really cool because then you see in a shaded manner the cube and you see your background image through that. But in my case, I have a problem now because I want to have a ghosting view here, but at the same time we get the same ghosting here in the perspective, which I maybe don't want. I still want to see here the shaded view, but you only have one switch here. The solution for that is that you unconnect the viewports. So how to do that? You press the D key, for example, while you are here over perspective. And then you go here to this little tick and you see apply operations to all split views. And I deactivate that. After you have done this, I can close it again. So if I now go into this window, I make sure that I'm inside of that and press the W key again. You see, I'm back here in shaded view. But this here is still ghosted. And now I can start working without any problems.